Hear NFL legends, players, coaches, and media members from around the country sharing their insights and stories with us year-round. Here on Thursday night, tailgate, 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 tail, 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 tailgate. All right, now joining us here on Thursday Night Tailgate is Garrett Webster. Garrett is the son of Steelers Hall of Fame center Mike Webster. And after an amazing NFL career, his father struggled for years, both physically and emotionally. It was the study of his brain that led to uh, Dr. Ben Amalu discovering CTE, which led to several changes in how the game is being played now and benefits for uh, you know the alumni players. That was Those were the positive things that came out of what uh, what Mike had to go through during the course of his life. Now, supposedly, you know, the settlement for the NFL loss, uh, concussion lawsuit is supposed to be dealing out funds and starting to take care of many of those alumni players. Unfortunately, funds have been very slow to change hands, which is the negative that's impacting, you know, I'm, I'm sure a huge you know, a population of guys that are in their families that are looking for, you know, their piece of, of this settlement to start out. And I'm sure, you know, Garrett and his mom and, and family are, you know, a, a group of those folks that are wondering, you know, when is this start going to start changing hands? And, and, oh, by the way, why are we not involved since it was, you know, Garrett's father, Mike, that this whole thing sort of spawned from? But uh, we'll talk about that uh, here in a minute. But uh, we're honored that Garrett is with us tonight here on Thursday Night Tailgate. Hey, Garrett, Chris, and Bob, thanks for coming on the show. Welcome. Hey, hey, Chris and Bob, how are you guys doing tonight? Uh, we're really good, Garrett. Great, thank you. So, Garrett, take us all the way back to when Dr. Omalu started, you know, to want to get involved with studying your father's brain. Did, did he explain a theory? Did he come to you guys and say, you know what, hey, I think I might be on to something here. Would you mind, you know, letting me take a look at your father's brain? What what was that like? Well, the the first time we actually heard from Dr. Muller was actually the, the night of my dad's first viewing back in 2002. It was the uh, it was a Thursday night, I remember, because I had a game on Friday. Um, and, uh, and even though, you know, it's funny when, when something like that happens, you know, you go through a crisis, a death in the family or whatever, it, you remember little things and stuff like that. And, uh, what happened is, is, is Dr. Amalu, I guess, had done my dad's autopsy and in kind of a weird way, you know, everybody likes to say, you know, that, oh, we, you know, had no idea about, you know, concussion, uh, you know, how bad concussions were. And yeah, we had no scientific evidence, but we had kind of like, you know, there would be the joke, if you play football, you're going to end up brain dead and blah, 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 and stuff like that. But, you know, Dr. Amalu, if being from, from Africa, he kind of had this outsider's knowledge of, or out, I don't say outsider's knowledge, but an outsider's view of it. And he heard all the, the wonderful stories and, and tributes that people were saying about my dad that day on the radio, you know, and... He looked at it as an outsider and said, you know, there, there has to be something more here. And when he contacted our family and asked for a donation, at first I thought it was some kind of, you know, weird joke, you know, or something like that. Because, you know, you, I mean, even now, you know, brain donations, it sounds like it's a very weird thing to, to ask for. And I've made those calls personally. But when we heard about it, I, I just thought it was, uh, you know, kind of a, a, a thing that my dad would have been a big – uh, supporter of, you know, he, he loved science and learning and stuff like that. And I also know that my dad probably would have made a joke and said, well, you know, I'm past using it anyways. Might as well somebody else get a, get a look at it. And, uh, you know, that, that was really the last I heard from it when we gave the okay. You know, everybody in the family was for it. You know, it was kind of a weird thing. He didn't approach it saying, oh, I think this is this new, um, you know, quote unquote res revolutionary disease or, or anything like that. It was just sort of a, you know, honestly, I just thought it was going to be something that him as a doctor would help improve his knowledge of uh, the human brain. I, I certainly didn't think, and I don't think anybody in the family thought that it would lead to something like this. Um, but, you know, I didn't hear anything again from him until about 2006. It was it was actually uh, about about a month or so after we had, dad had been granted full benefits from, you know, and won the case and the lawsuit and everything like that against the NFL. Um, for his disability claim. And, uh, we had come out to Pittsburgh to, we kind of always told my dad that, uh, you know, after we settled up and, and, and the lawsuit was won and stuff, we were going to do kind of a dinner with everybody who helped my dad through his dark days and kind of, you know, just kind of do a little thank you thing. And, uh, Dr. Malu had driven up from, I think he was in West Virginia at that point, um, to, 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 to talk to me. 
And uh, he showed me my dad's autopsy photos, and he showed me the cow proteins and stuff like that that were in the brain. And uh, at this time, I think he had already done uh, Justin Strelzik and Andre Waters as well, and uh, Terry Long, and one other person. I can't remember who the other person was. Um, and he started to explain to us about CTE and stuff like that. And, and uh, that's, you know, it still took a while for it to hit on how big of a deal it was. Um, but in a way, it was kind of like, okay, there, there was something more to my dad than just, um, you know, being knocked around a little too much or, um, you know, having something that couldn't be explained, you know, and, and that was, you know, that was kind of the timeline and um, kind of the way it snuck up on all of us. And, and Garrett, you know, during, you know, I guess even prior to that, I should say, what, what was it like, you know, for you and your family, your mom, as, as your dad was going through all the struggles that we read about, you know, the homelessness and the dementia and all of that sort of thing? What was it like for you guys trying to deal with that, live with that, and really understand what was going on with your father? Well, we we didn't realize what's going on. You know, it's, it's I've always, you know, people try to, you know, talk about CTE like, like a disease like cancer or something like that. It, it's not like that. You know, it's it's. You know, and, and not trying to downplay cancer or anything like that. It's just as horrible, if not worse, than than any disease out there. But you know, when somebody gets a disease like like C, like cancer or something, you pretty much are are at least have an idea of what to expect, even if it's a good prognosis and and it's one of the cancers that you know, thankfully, we can kind of you know be relatively sure they're going to be okay. But you know, their health is going to take a hit, and it's kind of a constant downward spiral. But with CTE and, and with my dad's case. It was more like, you know, if anybody in, if anybody out there has had a family member or a loved one or a friend that has a drug problem or a drinking problem and how, you know, at certain point in times, you know, you see them and they're their old selves, you know, and the human condition is when you see your loved one kind of acting like them old, their old selves, even for an hour, you talk yourself into believing, oh, they're getting better. This is going to be it. This is going to be the day everything turns around. But with my dad, it it was just that constant up and down, up and down, up and down, sometimes hour by hour, sometimes minute by minute. And, you know, the thing about my dad is now I was born in 84. So I was kind of born, you know, at the tail end of my dad's career. You know, I, I remember I remember going to his last game for the Steelers, but I, I kind of remember more of him being in Kansas City than I do uh, in Pittsburgh. And but everybody would always talk about how smart dad was, how, you know, everybody thought he was going to be a head coach or, um, you know, he was going to do something really successful after his career was over with. But then there was this disconnect. I, I know people when they would see dad, um, you know, a few years later, you know, even, you know, two or three years after he retired, you know, they would be like, who is this guy? You know, there was a big rumor going around town in, in Pittsburgh that my dad had a drug problem and, and all of this was drugs and stuff like that. And that was a problem. And it wasn't because, you know, my dad had a drug problem or anything like that. It was because people couldn't understand what he was going through. And obviously as a family, we didn't. And, and that's one of the best things. And I hate to say the word best things, but one of the good things about CTE is we finally had an answer for why he was acting that way. Um, you know, and, and just like I said, just like with a family member who's got an addiction issue, you know, one, even though it's terrible to get that news that they had a drinking problem or they had a drug problem and stuff like that, you have some answers, you know, and, and I think that you have a general, like, okay, now doctors, guys who are way smarter than anybody out there can fix it or can treat it or can, you know, medicate it or whatever you want to call it. And, and that's kind of, you know, the knowledge we had after the fact. But during it, it was just a giant whirlwind of, you know, what's life going to throw at us today? And, and it was very, very hard growing up. It was very hard seeing, you know, because at the end of the day, as hard as it was for us, uh, you know, it, I, it was even harder for my dad. You know, it, he went from somebody who, you know, and this was still the, you know, growing up past the 50s and 60s and stuff like that, where, you know, the man was the head of the household and was responsible for the bills and stuff like that. And. You know, and it hurt him. It hurt his pride to, to know that he pretty much everything he was trying to do because we, we had no backup. You know, my dad didn't make the kind of money they make today where, you know, my dad could have just sat around and, and you know, sat in a nursing home or, or uh, just sat in a chair and, and enjoyed anything and, and, you know, had his life. You know, he had to go out and make money. 
Um, and he couldn't do it. And everything he went into, you know, business wise, life wise was just, you know, I hate to use the term because it sounds harsh, but it was a failure. And all of us as kids had to see that. And it wasn't like it was over, you know, the, I think 11 years after he retired to when he died. I mean, this was in months. Um, you know, and it, it was hard. You know, it was, it was the worst thing I went through. And it's something, you know, in a way I wish my dad, you know, would have just, you know, even though I wouldn't trade those memories, even the bad ones with my dad, for anything, um, you know, there's part of me that wishes he just would have dropped dead the day after he retired or, or, you know, whatever. So we would never have had to go through that kind of slow, agonizing, torturous death as a family that we all went through. And the depiction, Garrett, of your father in the movie Concussion, did they do it right? Was that pretty um, accurate? I, I, I've, I've only seen parts of the movie. Uh, you know, I, I like to say, you know, a lot of people ask me if I've seen it and I said, no, I lived it. That's enough. Um, but, but from everything I've, I've heard about it and from a little bit I've seen, you know, uh, some stuff is quote unquote over dramatized, but you know, CTE is a subtle disease. You know, it, it's like I was saying, there are going to be times where guys can, it can appear normal and, and in a certain level you have to, especially in a movie, like let's be real here. It's a movie. It's not a documentary. It's something that, um, you know, you kind of have to, I, I don't know what the term is, entice, dramatize, whatever, you know, you have to show some of these effects and sometimes you have to show them in a very extreme way, you know, to get people to stand up and notice, um, you know, how bad it is. You know, it's, it's tough to show, you know, a decline of somebody who acted some way 15 years ago and then seeing how he acts right, you know, uh, two years later. Um, but from, from everything I've heard and everything I've seen, um, it, it was a, a very accurate depiction. Um, it, there were some things that were, there was a bait, let's just say there's a basis of truth to everything that was shown. Um, some of them might have been shown a little more, um, dramatic than they actually happened, but, Honestly, that's just probably because, you know, there wasn't a camera around to show, um, you know, how it was when it was actually happening. And sometimes, you know, I mean, I remember days where my dad would have those dramatic, um, you know, shaking fits and all that other kind of stuff because, you know, somebody messed up his order at Burger King or, or he ordered the wrong thing or he picked the wrong thing to eat or he couldn't taste food or, um, you know, he couldn't figure out his, his checkbook or, you know, he couldn't find out you know, how to drive home, um, where that frustration and anger that they tried to show in the movie set in. Um, so I, I think they did a good job and I think it's a very difficult thing. And, and honestly, I would rather have them quote unquote overplay it than underplay it. Bob, questions for Garrett? And Garrett, do you ever wrestle with the fact that <clears throat> there are people your age, maybe even younger than you, that they'll hear the name Mike Webster and they'll say, oh, poor guy, had a tough ending, as opposed to guys maybe like Chris and I who remember when he played and remember him as one of the greatest players that ever stepped on a football field? Well, I, I think that, you know, the funny thing is, and, and this is kind of forgotten about now, but if you go back to pretty much up until my dad's death, there was nothing really about my dad. I mean, you know, we as a family would always laugh, and I, and I know it would we'd laugh because it hurt ourselves, and I, I know it hurt my dad too, but they do these NFL 100 toughest players or NFL's best linemen or something, and my dad would never be on those lists. You know, he would never be in the video. The only time he would make any of those things is if they were voted on by journalists or fans or, or, or something like that. So growing up, you know, we didn't think anybody knew who my dad was. Um, you know, I didn't understand how big of a deal my dad was growing up until we went out to the Hall of Fame and we saw all the, um, you know, Steeler fans out there with their terrible towels and, and stuff like that. And, you know, we grew up in Wisconsin, too, where, uh, you know, they kind of had a much different view of my dad and my family. And, and, and life was very different there than it is in Pittsburgh, where I live now. And, you know, on one level... I do like him to be known for his football uh, things he did in the football field because take away everything that football is. I know it's just a game and stuff like that, but it was still my dad's life life's work. You know, it was still what he dedicated his life to. And it was still something that, you know, he was very proud of and he did love, you know, and I think that was one of the biggest difficulties for him is separating those two, you know, and even today as a family, you know, we have trouble separating that, 
you know, anger about what happened to my dad with the fact that he has a huge personal uh, part of the game's history. But I'm also very, very proud that he's remembered as being something more than a football player. And, I mean, you can make an argument, and this is not to downplay any other athlete or, or anything like that. I mean, you know, so many athletes and football players and, and stuff like that do so many great things in their community and stuff like that. But you could make an argument that my dad was the most important player with the biggest impact in, in NFL history um, between playing and, you know, you look at how he revolutionized the offensive line and, um, you know, how how the center position is viewed and stuff like that to the four Super Bowls and all that kind of stuff to, you know, not just concussions and stuff like that, but also players' rights. I mean, that's how this whole thing started was a discussion on retirement benefits and, and what guys deserve when they retire and what they leave when they leave the game. And then it kind of bled into this issue with concussions and CTE and brain damage and, you know, Dr. Amalu and, and all that kind of stuff. And, um, you know, I I have trouble thinking of another player off the top of my head in, in any sport, really, that has had, you know, that big of an impact. Because, you know, with concussions, that's something that can happen to anyone. That happens to soldiers. That happens to, you know, regular moms and dads. That happens to, you know, I always say, you know, we all know somebody who is in a 30-mile-an-hour fender bender, and they get a concussion, and they're never the same after that. Um, so it's, it's something that my dad has brought a lot of attention to. And if that's all he's known for, I, I would be honored with that. But I'm also happy that there's a lot of people. And, and again, maybe because I live in Pittsburgh, there's obviously going to be a lot of fans who specifically remember my dad for that team in the, in the seventies. Um, but you know, I am happy that there's a lot of people too, who now, I mean, it was a trip for us a couple of years ago. He was in Madden on that ultimate team thing. And, you know, I, I remember I just got a huge kick that he was in the game and stuff like that. I remember I think the whole family gathered around the TV and we kept zooming in and out to see the, uh, you know, the, uh, his face and stuff like that. And we would joke that he didn't have a chaw of tobacco in while he was playing and stuff like that. So, but, uh, it's, you know, it's an honor. It, it's tough. And I, in a way, I wish we never had it. I wish we didn't have to go through the stuff that we have to go through. But, you know, if you're part of it, you know, you might as well make an impact on this world while you're alive. And having gone through what you did, Garrett, I know you would not wish that on any other family. With that said, I, I, I have to ask you what you would think about young kids getting into the game, uh, the protection, uh, and all the concerns now that parents have to have about kids and avoiding this kind of situation. Well, I, I you know, I think that first off, anything in life that's worth doing, there's going to be a risk involved. Having said that, you know, is there a bigger risk for for people who play football at a certain age and stuff like that? I mean, of course there is. But the brain isn't like a knee. And I think it's very dangerous to just say blanket responses because this happens to one person. You know, it's going to happen to everybody else. I mean, there's a lot of players who are playing today or, or played who probably had more concussions or, or more blows to the head than my dad. And they're fine. And, and that's from a scientific act, aspect, and I, I know I've talked to Dr. Amalo and Dr. Bales and, and a few other people about it, is, you know, that's kind of the, the last human uh, frontier when it comes to brain science and stuff like that, discovering the differences. But my dad loved playing football, and, and I love playing football, and I love the relationships and the friends I made in high school and in eighth grade and all that kind of stuff, and the lessons it taught about hard work and everything. And and also how much the game means to so many people. And I know that sounds like maybe a cheesy thing to say, oh, well, it's worth human lives to let people get drunk on Sundays and watch games. But the other thing to remember is that people are becoming more aware of it and people are becoming educated about it. And, and you know what? Maybe if your your kid is extremely undersized and, you know, wants to play football, maybe you say, whoa, maybe this isn't a good idea. And, yeah, that's tough, but it's certainly better than, you know, letting him go out there and, and get killed or get beat up, um, you know, and, and I think that parents, and that's the other thing, too, is that with this whole CTE and concussions, everybody seemingly wants to just play, point the blame at one person, but but it's not that simple. There, there's blame to everybody involved. 
And, you know, when it comes to, let's say, my kids playing football, if I had them and, and they said, came to me and said, hey, I want to play football, I mean, if that's what they wanted to do, I would be in favor of it. But as a parent, I would be more cognizant of what was going on. Um, I, I would make sure the coaches, the trainers have an idea of what's going on. I, you know, I think the NFL could make more, um, take more steps to ensure player safety, but they're doing things now that they weren't doing, um, you know, five years ago even. And, and that's important, you know, and, and it's not going to be a change that's going to happen overnight. I, I would like to think that, um, it's going to continue to get better and better, you know, and it, it's not just, I don't think it'll ever go back to being where it was, where it was just, you know, if you have a concussion, you're, you know, called uh, a, a wuss and, and, you know, your teammates make fun of you and stuff because, I know as a player, that was what I was always most fearful of, as was my fellow teammates and stuff like that. Not, um, you know, if I said, hey, I have a, a concussion or something like that, you know, that would, would, would scare me from and prevent me from going back in and playing. But I think now we're in a situation with our society around the world where people now understand if you say you have a concussion, it, it's, you know, get out of the game. You know, and your teammates have responsibility and stuff like that. And I think that's where we're going down. And I think that's a good thing. Um, so I, I wouldn't blanketly, you know, just say, okay, no, you're not playing football because there's a risk of concussion because, you know, I, what's the next part? Do I tell my kid, hey, you can't, you know, let's say my kid wants to be a cop. What am I going to say? Oh, you can't be a cop because there's a risk you could get shot or, you know, you could play baseball and, uh, uh you know, look at the, <laughs> these pitchers who pitch 100 miles an hour, you can get hit in the face with one of those if a guy, you know, accidentally slips on the mound and that could kill you, you know, and, and I'm not going to prevent my, my son or, or whatever from doing that. So, you know, it's a tough thing, but it's, it's something where I would let him do it, but I would have, I would take on that responsibility of being more cognizant of what's going on. And for the players who are playing now, they need to be cognizant of how what they're doing is going to affect their families. And that's what my dad always said he was most upset about was it wasn't necessarily what happened to him that he was upset with. It was because what happened to him affected everyone around him. And, yeah, it was a different time where there were no programs. There were, you know, nobody understood concussions and stuff like that. But it still happened to us. You know, I, 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 there's times where I lie in bed at night and I think, you know, why did this have to happen to us? You know, why couldn't, you know, dad just have retired and we could have been a normal family and stuff like that. But, you know, it, it didn't happen that way. And, uh, you know, I think that awareness, you know, focusing on it, you know, until the science can quote unquote cure it, um, you know, that's, that's all you can do. Garrett, one more before we let you go. And, and I read that your family isn't being included in any of the payouts because the settlement stated that any player who died before 2006 and your father passed in 02 isn't eligible for any of the settlement money. Is that is that accurate? Is that what's going to happen? I mean, for crying out loud, your father is the one that got all of this rolling, if you will, and brought all the attention to it. Is it really that well, the league is not going to allow you guys to be a part of the settlement? Well, when the, now some of this, and again, I'm not a lawyer, so some of this is going to be personal. I'll give you my personal opinion, and I'll give you from what I stand from from our our attorney with it. Is first off, it, it's total BS. You know, it's it's and and here's the thing, and, and this is always important to me. It's not just my dad who was cut out; it was also Terry Long and Justin Sirleck's family who were cut out, and. No one has ever explained to me why there is a number one, 2006 is the cutoff date. And number two is even, even if they opened it up to, let's say any player, you would still have to have their brain saved, preserved, and you would have to have proof of CTE. Well, keeping brains and studying brains was extremely rare up until, you know, my dad and stuff like that. So you can't help but think that our family, Terry Long and Justin, Justin Strozak, who were three of the first five cases of CTE that, uh, cause when you publish, publish a medical paper to propose a new, uh, disease or condition or whatever, you have to have, I believe, five, five confirmed cases. And, you know, my dad and those guys were, were three of them. I know Andre Waters was, is, he passed away after the, um, the cutoff date. So I know he qualified. 
but you can't help but feel that the, it's just the league doing one final F you to us. And, and I don't understand what the point of that is, um, you know, and, and why they have to be that way. You know, if they do it and they said, let's say, you know, because my dad's death should be the start point. That should be the cutoff point. That should be the minute where they say, you know, okay, Mike Webster's death, because every single one of these cases is using my dad's condition and the evidence learned from my dad's case as the basis for their them getting their money. And to be cut out of it is just a just a total I don't even know what the term is, but it, it literally makes me want to throw up sometimes. Just just how upsetting and hurtful it is. To go through everything that we've gone through. And it, don't get me wrong, it, I, if at the end of the day, if everybody who's in, part of that settlement can get their, what's due to them, what's owed to them, and we ultimately get completely shut out and never receive a dime, don't get me wrong, that really, really sucks. But I'm happy that other people are going to get taken care of, and hopefully they won't have to go through what we went through. But at the same time, too, how many times does our family have to take it on the chin? And... Now, from what our lawyer has said is now when when it was first proposed, this settlement back in, good Lord, it, it seems like they proposed it back when my dad was still alive. It's been so long. But uh, when it was first announced, they, they there was a hard cutoff date that we would not have had any chance to get anything. Now, the judge in the case made them go back and add provisions for people who, like us, um, who can still be included in the settlement. Um, so from what I know is, is there, there's a clause where we can ap- apply for um, special consideration or something like that, um, which, uh, again, I, I don't understand what would be the thing preventing us to get it. I mean, I, last time I checked, I don't think the NFL is really hurting, hurting money-wise. And, I mean, realistically, and, and trying to think of this as, a, as an outside source, I mean, it would be good PR for them for for them to take care of us and Justin Strelzik and and Terry Long's family and stuff like that, um, you know. But you know, hopefully that's what will happen. So there is a chance, you know, that we could still get something. It might not be the full amount um, that that other people are getting, which you know, again, is hurtful and ridiculous and stuff like that. But uh, you know, at this point in time, our family is so defeated by so many things. Um, and so just used to, I guess, like I said, taking it on the chin, um, you know, it, it's, you just got to try to roll with it and make the best of it you can. Um, you know, we're certainly hoping, we're certainly praying, you know, that, that we get part of it because, you know, and not to sound arrogant or downplay anybody else's impact, you know, my feeling is, is if, you know, my dad's going to be cut out of this case and Justin Schultz can carry along, then what's the point of anybody getting it? Um, you know, and that's the part that hurts the most is it's, it's, you know, both the fact that we're not even being thought of and the fact that we're being cut out, you know, and that's, uh, it really does hurt. It, it sucks. Well, Garrett, we can't thank you enough for taking time out of your night to share the story that, you know, your family is dealing with, the things your father went through and all of those sorts of things. Thank you for sharing with us. I hope you'll come back, and as things progress, we'd sure like to, you know, keep in touch and stay up to date with what's going on. But uh, from a from a standpoint with what you just talked about, we certainly feel like you guys are should be at the front of the list as uh, money starts to change hands, which is, you know, happening at an all too slow of a rate. But you guys certainly should be at the forefront. Yep. Hey, you guys were proud. The next time I want to come on and talk WrestleMania, you guys, you know, that was the goal here. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta talk to John Cena. Indeed, we'll talk all about Roman I got, Reigns I got a hot and the whole night. I got a hot take. I'm full of it. I'll, I'll be waiting. <laughs> oh, that'd be great. <laughs> Thanks, Garrett. We appreciate it. We'll catch up soon. Good luck. And in between now and have then, a, all the best to you and your family. Thank you, guys. Have a great night. Take care. Right, Garrett. Thanks, Garrett. Bye. That is Garrett Webster, son of uh, Hall of Fame center Mike Webster. Um, you know, Bob, I, I don't know. You know, I, it, the, the story breaks my heart, right? I mean, you think about Mike Webster being, you know, sort of the genesis of all of this, right? On the down, you know, on the negative side for all the things that he had to go through at the end of, you know, his career and towards the end of his life. And to think that, you know, what, 
what the positive that came out of it, right, is the discovery of CTE, and, and now we have a concussion lawsuit. Hopefully money starts to change hands with the NFL and the former players and the guys that, and the guys in the families that need it. But the, you know, the crime, the crime of the century would be the fact that Mike Webster's family is, are, are cut out of this thing. That, that absolutely makes no sense. And to his point, you know, being, you know, in the Steeler Nation and in the Steelers fans and Justin Strelzik and Terry Long, those folks are, you know, just as deserving. But how in the world can you tell Mike Webster's family, sorry, your dad died too early. He's not involved in this thing. That's a crime. It's like pouring salt on the wound, Chris. You're, you're right. I mean, I just feel the pain in his voice and his family. And, again, you and I were, were watching his father play, my goodness, back, before he was born. I, it, it goes back so long. And, you know, when we got to the point where we heard bad things were happening to Mike Webster and, and you're reading about him in the paper, nothing like he was on the football field. And now it's all coming crystal clear, but for them to still be having to go through and reliving bad things, the family, that is, uh, it is really a sad story. I just hope somebody um, can realize what's happening here. And, and without all the people that we've talked to that give help to the veterans and people going through some bad things, maybe they can help out the Webster family as well. Indeed, yeah, absolutely. I'm with you.